right, guys, we're here with the first episode of the En Route. En route. En route. En route. En route. <laughs> we, we will get to that later. Uh, the first podcast is episode number one. Um, and we have special guest Tommy Johnston with S- Tommy Johnston State Farm, mm. which uh, just happens to be uh, here in Forsyth, which we have, seems to have more State Farms here than we do Subway. <laughs> which is, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure uh, what happened there. But, uh, it's, uh, it definitely seems to be a thing. So I uh, just want to let you introduce yourself a little bit, what you got going on, uh, who you are. Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, guys. On the, uh, I'm going to go with En Route. As opposed to in route, I think in route is we can be two against one. Yeah, so in, in route, <laughs> in route podcast, uh, first first uh, first annual, first one, not first annual necessarily, but um, you know, born and raised in Thomaston, Georgia, not too terribly far from here, and uh, I've been married for thirteen years to Carmen, my lovely bride. I have a dog, Rusty, and Rusty, yeah, I like it, little, little English cocker spaniel, and um, you know. Just been in insurance, start my, just started my third year here, and, you know, love Forsyth, enjoy being here, and, uh, you know, look forward to growing my business and, and expanding Forsyth and its mind. Yeah, that's, uh, I just, just to kind of go back on that, so, me and Gator both went to Thompson School, so we both went to Upson Lee. Oh, yeah. Which, it, it could be hated over here a little bit. That is true. And, and we all, so technically, speaking of it, we have businesses and we're all from thomaston and there's another one in town that just came we have hills auto service hills auto. and he's also from thomaston so we have and worked for you yeah. at one point right? yes yeah, first so. ever job he had was uh working for me back on uh at my uh family so just, uh, business just there. a quick note i just uh, yeah. happened to think about just off the top of my head but uh yeah yeah we, we have to be careful with that you know yeah and, we from thomaston and then coming over here and you know people want to know where you stand and i'm like you know hey mary person's bulldogs Ooh, then you go back home and it's like oh yeah up Nights. night yeah oh, yeah i mean why do you think we hung a mary person's bulldog you know banner up in here it was right beside the knights one so i mean yeah. well, let's stir it up a little bit yeah. i guess not we, we we're mary persons now i mean yeah. I, definitely so but uh yeah, I got it. If you want to kick off the next segment. Cool. Um, as add more into like who you are and things, we got a little segment we call like uh, rapid fire questions, quick questions. I'm going to name two things. And the first one that comes to your mind that you prefer one over the other, just say it just so people can kind of get to know you a little bit more. Okay. So we got about 10 questions. Um, so obviously being local, let's go black or gold. Gold. Pizza or burger. Burger. Chevy or Ford. Chevy. City or country? Country. Whiskey like, or wine? Like the thing. Whiskey. <laughs> Football or baseball? Hmm. I want to go baseball. Flying or driving? Flying. Dine in or take out? Dine in. Reading or listening? <laughs> listening. Call or text? Text. My personal favorite. Patrick or Gator? I'm just kidding. You don't really have to answer that one. <laughs> I mean, you, you you can answer it. No. I mean, we know uh, it's it's whatever. Well, you know, it, it depends if I'm need to be pulled out of a well, or is my car broken down, or you know, who how about situ- how about situational? There, <laughs> pulled out of a well. Who would that be? Well, you know, I, if I had to get pulled out of a well, I think I'd probably go with Gator. Oh, that's a bad choice. If I need, if I need my car fixed, I think I'd go with you. Eh, that might be a bad choice too. You're probably better off the Hills Auto Service. <laughs> Not a plug, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we kind of touched already based on it, but, uh, you know, as far as Thomaston, I talked about that, um, and Gator kind of talked about it before the podcast, uh, you know, what brought you to Forsyth? Well, uh, you know, the State Farm Opportunity is one of the reasons that I came to Forsyth, um, but another reason is because of the intrigue of it, with it being kind of in between Macon and in between, um, you know, the Jonesboro, McDonough area and all that, and just, there's just the growth that's coming this way, um, you know, it looks like there's just a lot of potential down the road for this area. Um, also, I just really like the, the downtown area and had a lot more connections here than I, than I really thought I did until I really started looking into it. Um, but I just think there's just so much potential and just so many great things that are coming here that, um, you know, I just looking long term, I think this is just going to be a great place to be long term. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it because we, we ended up here as a mistake. And I'm not saying that to be rude, but it was really, in my opinion, it was kind of a mistake because, you know, I was at Georgia Southern and me and my wife are trying to find a place to get married and, and settle down. I'm from Pike. You know, she's from Byron and we're like, hey, where are we going to live? So we put a dot and it's like, hey, this place called Forsyth that I just got on the interstate for all these years going to Georgia Southern happens to be right where we need to be. And so 
we planted it here and then we end up putting the business here and it's just like I didn't even think of that, but like years later, we're like, man, we kind of put this in a great spot. Like mm-hmm. Forsyth has so much potential mm-hmm. to be really, like you said, just the growth here. It, it's, it's not even started. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's so much more to go. And we're like, hey, maybe we can be a sign shop here and maybe people will use us as we grow. So that's, it kind of worked out. I hate the term sign shop. But. Oh, yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, sign shop's not the best term. So, yeah, I mean, so as far as you've only been doing insurance for three years. I just started my third year. So you, so how? I guess explain how you got into that and, and what you've done before. As yeah, because well. I mean, I thought yeah. me personally, I thought you've done insurance for a long time. I didn't realize that was a new thing. Mm-hmm. Well, when I I went to school at Valdosta State and I graduated from there and then went into real estate development with a group uh, down there for a couple of years after school and then kind of realized real estate wasn't for me. Then and moved back to Thomaston where I'm originally from. My parents had a uh, wholesale flower growing business there so i went in and worked with them for about 10 years uh you know ran it the last three years and just kind of came to a point where deciding what i really wanted to do um, you know did i want to stay in this industry do i want to change out and had a great opportunity come up in columbus where I, I went to work with a company called the woodruff company um and developed a landscape maintenance company to maintain their properties they owned and then we grew it from there and um then I had I got really struck down by a uh, heart attack. He's 38 years old. So I dropped dead, um, came to him. I, I was in Emory Hospital in Midtown. Uh, I was life lighted. You know, just everything in my life just came to a screeching halt. And from that came out of wanting to get in the insurance business because I had listened to a lot of people along the way from – different insurance companies, whether it's life insurance, health insurance, you know, really had everything laid out like I was supposed to. I was not overinsured, but I was insured properly and didn't even realize it because I never missed a beat. My wife, my family, we never missed a beat because we had the right things in place. So I came out of that a completely different person and knew that I just wanted to help people. And I just, as crazy as some people, it sounds to some people, I just, I love insurance and just, I saw, I was a benefit of what happens if you have everything in the right place. And you know, the opportunity with State Farm came about, and I interviewed for it and was fortunate enough to be chosen for it, and here we are today, and I get, I get to help people every day, literally get to help people every day. So that's that's, that's what drives me. Yeah, well, that's what's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's something I didn't – I think that's something cool because we, me and Gator have like a little saying that we'll talk about every once in a while. I was like, you know, one of the big – and it's like the same thing with Shark Tank. You know, any of those shows, like, it's like find a problem to something, and there's – there's an opportunity. Right. And that, I feel like that's kind of what you did is when that happened, it, it made you realize like, man, like, like you said, you didn't even realize you were covered necessarily. It's like, and, I, and even I feel like that today, it's like, you know, all the insurance we get, even like for the business and, and even like vehicle wise, you know, any kind of insurance, you always kind of feel like, what do I really have? Mm-hmm. You know, you see all these numbers and it's like, well, what does that really mean? And then you got the fine print. And so I think it's cool that somebody like you has gone in that and say, okay, how do we? How do I make this simple for everybody else to realize what they need to get, okay. and not just hand them what I think they need? Let's truly figure out what they truly need. Right. So I, that's a. I did not know that. That's a yeah, selling to the need. I mean, I had. I was just very fortunate that I had a lot of people that have taken me down this path and gotten me here where I am today because they just were looking out for me, my best benefit, not just trying to sell me something. And we're like, you need this, and I just said, oh, you're the professional. You're telling me I need this. Then then let's just go with that. And fortunately everything was just in the right position. So that's how I, that's how I go about my every day when I meet with customers or people that are interested in, you know, being part of our state farm family. I just, I tell them, you know, Hey, I'm going to sell it to what I think you need. And, and if you need it, you want to do it. Great. Your proof of the importance of it. I mean, that's the simplified like line there. I mean, which is realistic. I mean, that's people don't think about the importance of it. Yeah, I mean, and everybody at some point in their life is going to need insurance in some capacity or another, whether it be from a car accident or something that happens with your home or whether it be something from a health standpoint. You know, at some point you're going to have to use insurance. Um, and if you don't have it the right properly in the right place, then it can it can devastate your family and devastate generations. Um, yeah, I, th- I think the issue is, though, is for me is I think the reason why people – dislike insurance is because it has almost this like false sale to it. It's like, mm-hmm. you need it. You got to have it. it it's mm-hmm. not, it's not sold from, I guess it kind of makes it sound cliche. It's not sold from the heart. It mm-hmm. feels like it's sold from, Hey, this is what you need. Here's how much it is. It's like a money thing. 
And I think like finding people like, like you and other ones that are truly like, Hey, this is what we want you to have to Mm -hmm. make sure you're covered. That's what's important. I think that's why you see so many people that that don't have it and, or don't have the right kind because they're just like, no, they're just trying to sell me something else. Well, fortunately with my heart, I can literally sell from my heart. There there you go. (laughs) You're right. Um, so Gator being back from Thompson, I'll let him kind of introduce the next one about just talk about a little bit about local events. Um, it's something that we both, we talk about it a lot because Forsyth is a small community, but mm-hmm. we have some pretty cool events that go on, but there seems to be somewhat of a disconnect. Um, and I guess it's kind of confusing because like, okay, so as business owners, there's business events. And then as a community person that like, doesn't own a business, then you have like the Forsythia Festival and even like down in Macon, you have the Cherry Blossom. But to me, there seems to be somewhat of a disconnect between like the locals and the businesses here. That may be another subject, but as far as like the, the business side of biz- the events here, is there something that you feel like, because we had this conversation prior to this, that it feels almost like people go in and shake hands you see the same faces and then everyone just kind of leaves. And it, it doesn't really feel like there's a whole lot of depth to what's going on as far as business events. And I'll tell a story to kind of make it a little bit easier for me, for us to understand in Gator too, is when we first moved here, I was like, Oh, you got to join the chamber. And that was like probably the first thing we did. One of, Within the first couple of months mean, of us being here, we were. Yeah. The I mean, and, and at first we're like, okay, cool. Like all these great business things. And, and, and we thought all this positive stuff. Well, then like a month later, we happened to meet somebody that had a bad experience with a chamber and I'm not naming the name. It doesn't matter anyways. They're not around anymore in, in this area. So it doesn't really matter. But anyways, they basically led us on to believe that the chamber was a, a waste of money that, you know, it was, you're not going to grow from it and all this. And what we learned from that situation is at first we kind of got up, man, we just spent this, you know, $300 on something that's not going to get us anywhere. But what we learned and really quick is like, it takes involvement to grow. And I think one thing I see here in Forsyth, and you're starting to see more of it. There's people obviously doing it. And even we're guilty of it. We're only doing what is necessary. We're, we're getting our Google listing. We're getting part of the chamber. You know, we put our little ad in the Monroe County reporter. We're, we're doing all these little small things, but w- to me and I think you'll have a better perspective because you you are on the the board and some other things as well is there more that we can do as business owners to to make these events better bigger get more people involved in this community bring more outside businesses in maybe that's if you got anything to add to that you know is there something that is is, just talk about a little bit about the events here I definitely I mean I think you did did sum it up of the question I asked but I mean just realistically like what is your opinion for like the growth of it all like with a business and Mm -hmm. just touch base on shed light on what you well kind of getting back to what you're talking about the chamber initially is that uh you know chamber and commerce uh in every small town are you know they're the the they're the ones that everybody just goes to for whether it be getting involved starting out when you first open everybody's got it and that's just an assumed thing that everybody just goes and does that Um, You know, did the same thing when I came here. And a lot of people, after they first initially join it, kind of step back and just think that it's a a silver bullet. That by joining the chamber, automatically, you know, I'm going to have 50 people lined up out the door the next day. And at my ribbon cutting, there are going to be 75 people there. And that, you know, I'm going to have an after hours thing and it's going to be the biggest one ever. And that's what everybody thinks is just a magic bullet that's going to just bring all these customers and stuff in there to it. But it's really uh, it's a great starting place. It's a great place to get in there initially, meet people, and get going. But you have to put into it more than just paying your dues every year. And I think that's what kind of you guys were just talking about. Um, that is something that I'm trying to do a better job of here uh, is being involved in the commu- and being involved more so in the chamber. And that's my good starting point to be able to, you know, really be able to expand on uh, growing my business as well as growing inside the chamber. Um, you know, from the event side of what you're you're talking about, you know, we have a lot of really good events here. Yeah, for and, sure. And uh, they're, I mean, they're regional events. I mean, we're lucky to have the Forsythia Festival here. I mean, that brings oh, yeah. that draws yeah, a lot of people and brings a lot of uh, people to our Forsyth community that we're you know not used to having here. Um, and without that large event, we wouldn't you know, we wouldn't have it. I mean, I mean, the, yeah. What what would Forsyth be without for Scythia Festival. I mean, there's so many people that realize that, hey, th- I mean, you, it's a big event for Forsyth. I mean, I've mm-hmm. been to a bunch of other festivals in bigger communities, and it's smaller than Forsythia Festival. So right. that, that says something in itself there. 
So, you know, are there things that you said you're working on it? Mm -hmm. And and I think this is a subject we can kind of talk about or or a little bit. What are some ideas that you have come up with to get more involved? And I'll kind of, if you want me to go first, I don't mean, I don't mind going first. No, I'll go ahead and start. You know, what are some things that other businesses can do? Because, I mean, I feel like we're putting too much pressure on, hey, the city should do this. The chamber Mm -hmm. should do this. When, in my opinion, we have a huge force of really good business owners. Mm -hmm. Why are we not doing anything? Yeah, well, us, you know, the chamber is just a small piece of yeah. it, of just, you know, when you point at something or point at anybody or point at anything, there are three fingers that are pointing back at you. Yeah. So, you know, the most important piece in all of it is yourself and what are you willing to do and what are you wanting to do to, you know, take the event, make it bigger or make your brand bigger or how can you play a bigger part in helping with all that? Um, you know, for instance, uh, I'm on, the, I was appointed to the board, chamber board this year, which I'm very thankful for and excited about that. Um, but what am I doing personally is that I have to go out and be an ambassador for the chamber and say, you know, come to people that don't know about it or people that are members that just pay their dues every day and go, well, do you know that we have a lot of different things that we're going on now? You know, I noticed that you hadn't been to a, a conversations and coffee. You know, we have a good core group that goes to it, but, you know, go out and bring people in and say, you just, just come to it. Yeah. Come yeah. to it and see what it's about. I mean, the last one that, that Gator and I went to was, was amazing. I mean, very experienced business people up there talking about trials and tribulations of having businesses for 30 plus years that, you know, you can't get that in a textbook. You can't get that on a, on a podcast or YouTube or anywhere else. That's real life business experience that, you know, you and I both walked away with stuff from that. So there's a lot of events that we have already in place that, you know, people just, assume it's going to be this or they just like oh i just don't have time to do it but you got to put the time in and go to those things and because you are going to walk away with something every time yeah I th- and i think gator kind of we've kind of been out of the loop for a while because we try to push the, the online business so much this past year we didn't go to all the events but w- looking back at it we did realize of how many great connections we made you know just truly like what it did for our business mm-hmm. and, and we noticed a, a decrease in local business when we this past year when we haven't been as involved and, and I think a lot of it is that. I think you truly have to, like, again, it goes back. You can't just show up to one or two events and then be like, oh, these people are going to come use my business. It, you really have to, people need to know you. It's about, to me, it's creating a, a portfolio of who you are. You're creating relationships yeah. with people. I mean, For sure. I mean, and, that's what it really boils down to. And I would say back on that, and people have asked us, you know, why have we started, like, the podcast? You know, what, what's the purpose of the podcast? And honestly, that is our way of trying to do something to to break that just flatline effect of hey we're just part of the chamber we're this and yeah we could go sponsor more events and all that but you know ultimately it's like what can we do right now what do we have the ability to the skills to do that we can help grow the local community Mm -hmm. and so that's why this podcast has started it's it's, this is our way of uh of doing that and we don't know what it's going to do. We don't know if it's really helping, but it's, it's something, it's better than just sitting back and, and just complaining about, you know, why our business is not growing or, or why we're going through this or why this is happening with the Forsythia Festival or why, it, it, and same thing, like you got involved and you're on the board now. And that's another thing that future of us, like we want to get more involved and be part of, you know, different groups, whether it be, you know, the downtown development group or the, the chamber or whatever. We want to try to find a better place to plug in to be able to give our advice and, and these things as well. So And we feel that we'd, be a, in the groups that too that we would feel we would be the most like valuable with because I mean just joining groups and things like you you gotta know that once again like you were saying you gotta really be involved with it and and <clears throat> you gotta be there be present with it not just physically but mentally as well you can't just sit in a corner mm-hmm. and not shake hands and not meet people right. and that's like one thing you go into some of these events and you can tell who's new <laughs> you know it's like you'll see them like in like a little corner or something just kind of sitting there you know, and, and it takes somebody to kind of go up but you know i'm that i'm that weird guy that likes to go up and shake hands so it's like these cold wet hands it's like <laughs> <laughs> way to make that off yeah i know yeah it's got clammy hands yeah well hey it's yeah it's de- well speaking of cold it is. It is cold. It's really cold. It's very cold. <laughs> you guys can't feel it looking through the cameras, but it is chilly. You know, it's also like negative five outside. We're so trying like. to make our business survive. Okay, we're yeah. just we had a fort microphones and stuff. So. I'm hoping you're gonna start printing some t-shirts soon. Get the heat yeah, that, going in there. Hey, it, it goes. It goes from about thirty to about 110. So you're happy on days you got to print t-shirts. Um, uh, so I'll let Gator handle this last question because he. It, He's more of an, I would say, an outsider than, and, and we talked about this already, but as far as outsider looking in, um, 
I get. I guess we, uh, I'll, I'll. It kind of brands off that past question a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it does go kind of with the last question, and and obviously with the fact that we're both we're, we're all from Thompson. We all went to school in um, Upson County, but you know, as an outsider coming into town, what do you what do you see as things that have like better potential and uh, does, it, does that make sense? Of the question, like, what, what do you see as like? I mean, future. What has better potential? And, and like, and it touches base with what we just asked of like getting involved and stuff as an outsider, like compared to that. Hey, like that's so and so. I went to school with them, mm-hmm. and all everybody from Mary Persons, like, just that outsider aspect of it. Yeah, well, there are a lot of benefits of being an outsider looking in when you when you come into a, a new community like this. And I don't know the history. I don't know the past. I don't know, you know, how things have always been done. Um, so I bring in a whole new perspective to things, uh, even as something as simple as the Forsythia Festival that's been done a certain way, been run a certain way. You know, and I come in and go, hey, well, I want to do this. I want to do that. And I'm like, well, you can't do it that way. Well, why not? Well, because we've always done it this certain way. And it's not knocking anybody. It's just that I, I just didn't know. And all of a sudden it's like, well, since that's not a bad idea, let's try to look at doing something that way. So by coming from the outside looking in, not knowing any of the history and everything, you do step on toes. You do uh, things sometimes that people say, hey, you know, we just don't do that like the air. Oh, I, I just didn't know. Um, so it also raises some good questions, but it also you kind of know there are some things that are done certain ways, and that's just how they're always going to be done. And, you know, don't try to change everything, um, but just sometimes you have to go with the flow because you just you don't know. Because I'm I'm sure you guys have done the same thing I've done. We, I've stepped on some toes, and I've done some things I just didn't know I wasn't supposed to do uh, in, in the smaller town. But yeah. No, I, 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 that's that's part of it though, and mm-hmm. I agree. I think that's the biggest aspect of being an outsider is that we have that ability to to step on toes and to be like, oh, we didn't know. Yeah, you know. Whereas people that have lived here, it's kind of like, oh, uh, you, yeah, you already yeah. knew that, you know, this, this, this. <laughs> yeah, and and we don't know all the drama either. Right. So we give everybody, you know, anybody we meet, we give everybody kind of the benefit of the doubt. That's what I was actually just about to say. Yeah, I mean, you don't look at people as of who they are, what they've done. You look at people as, hey, this is a new person that I get to meet. And everything's, I mean, as we've been saying, like it's a positive light no matter what going into it. Like mm-hmm. you're just like, okay, new person. Like, let, yeah. who are you? Let's get to know each other. And I mean, I've met a lot of great people here. And I mean, we, not not even knowing their past, not really caring. I mean, because in, let's face it, real world, who cares? Right. Like, yeah. but Every, everyone's got a, a, a somewhat of a crazy past. Okay. So, you know, I, I think just, it's cool though as as just being involved with the chamber now i feel like you've kind of as an outsider you've probably made the most effort to get in there and i would say step on toes but just to get in there and try to make some changes that are necessary Mm -hmm. or or that you you maybe you do have a better perspective and we had a past conversation um about uh dublin Mm -hmm. and i know you mentioned and this kind of goes back to the outsider perspective too is looking at somewhere like dublin to forsyth where where do you want it to go? What do you see the future of Forsyth? Because I mean, I think me and Gator have our perspective, but mm-hmm. I think as two different generations of of ages and stuff, like what what do you see? Where do you want to see it in ten years? Well, um, as far as talking about like Dublin, for instance, I mean every those good sized towns like Dublin that is bringing in some good industry. They found some different niches in uh, whether it be from an industry industry side and just finding some things with uh, the military and just different little areas where they've been able to bring in some industry that is going to be there. It's going to stay there. It's got tons of good growth potential and uh, their city and county have gotten together and the chamber and the downtown development authority, they've all kind of worked together and have really brought in some really good, positive things there and thus the whole community has um you know benefited from it um every larger town in georgia it seems whether it be a augusta valdosta macon columbus anything like that they all have a i don't know what's going on out there but that's that's yeah that's you never know what you get around here <laughs> that's this is the uh, i don't know if your listeners can hear that or not but there's <laughs> i don't know there's a mud bog you. going out in our parking lot yeah, yeah. It, would, it would seem that way and here we There's go. Another one. All right. <laughs> another pass. <laughs> but every, every larger town, it seems like in Georgia, has a smaller town near it that's thriving on its own um, because of there being a bigger town there. And I kind of see Forsyth having the best of both worlds because only are we affiliated indirectly, directly, however you want to put it, with Macon. You also have just north of us, you have multiple towns that are 
getting bigger and developing and, and we're able to benefit from them as well too. So I think that that's one of the major things I see for Forsyth and the growth is that becoming, we're going to be a bedroom community any way you look at it. I mean, that we're just, that's just kind of how it's going to be, but we can be the best bedroom community that there is because we can bring in a lot of things that can bring people to the downtown area, whether it be the Forsyth Fox Hunt or whether it be the, the great different restaurants that have just opened since I've been here the three years, we've had some really good restaurants and boutiques and different things that are opening up that are drawing people here. Um, you know, um, that's, I just think long term, and I keep going to that long term thing because of controlled growth and because of you know being smart about uh, who we bring in and what we develop here, whether it be industry or whether it's even small business. You know, everybody does raise their hand and go, "We need industry. We need industry. We need industry." Yes, industry is very important, but most of the people in the country are employed by small businesses. Yeah, and I think people get that that like they get scared when they hear the term, and that's one thing when we first moved here. You know. It was that whole idea that people were a little scared of growth mm-hmm. in the sense of they didn't want to become McDonough or they didn't want to become you know, one of these. And I get that. I don't want for sight to become McDonough. And I, and I really think mainly because of traffic, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we well, talk about Warner Robins with that, too. Uh, but, you know, mainly because of, you know, it's, it's people are scared of that big industry in a sense. And, and when we talk about big industry, like, for instance, five below coming in town. That's huge for jobs, and it's going to bring in mm-hmm. growth. And it's pulling. The cool thing about that is, is it's again, it's pulling fifty percent from Forsyth and fifty percent from Macon. You know, that's that's great. It doesn't affect me and you as business necessarily directly, and it doesn't change the way our downtown looks. You know, traffic wise, it's mainly pulling off interstate. You know, so stuff like that really, I don't feel like it's going to have a, a huge impact on on what everybody thinks it's going to do. You know, I would love to see a ton of new small businesses in the next five to ten years, and I think that's very likely given some of the stuff that needs to be fixed. Uh, but I, I really feel like the next five, 10 years, we're going to see a huge spike in, in small business. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I mean, we, if anything, you get more stuff like this, like a podcast and more local events going on, such as car shows and more kid events and more shop local events. You're just going to have more to do. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that's the bigger aspect of it is, you know, just there needs to be more here, mm-hmm. especially if you're trying to bring in younger crowd and that's a whole new podcast but yeah. you know if you're trying to bring in a younger generation like you're, you're not going to do that by just staying old stay, yeah just staying old school you're gonna have to make some changes so mm-hmm. you know and i think it's cool to see people that have other businesses and i and i judging by other events that we've had in the town i think there's a lot of people here that have the same idea that hey we want growth but we want it we want it in a way that yeah where well, we don't become some mm-hmm. mcgon and i think the chance of that happening is giving where we're at very, we're we're kind of too far south of that Atlanta thing. Right. Um, you know, we're, m- the closest thing north of us that's anything remotely of size is Locust Grove, but I mean that's a twenty five minute drive. You still got to go Griffin, Jackson, all yeah. that down. So, I mean, if you just look at the even, I know a lot of focus is put on the downtown area just because of uh, it's it's a hot topic and it's popular mm-hmm. all over uh, the Georgia and the southeast for that matter about oh, yeah. small towns getting revived. But just in the small amount of time I've been here, I mean we've had. New stores opening up, new restaurants open. Just had a restaurant open last week. There's the uh, new place about to open on the square uh, in the next few weeks. There's a lot of construction going on. We're about to demolish the uh, that building that's across from Hill Automotive over there that's going to be the new uh, city office and everything. And it's going to be right next to the police station. That's just going to be a huge plus over there. And that big parking lot next to it's going to get redone. So, I mean, there's just a lot of awesome things that are really about to be happening here. Um, that's going to create a lot of good buzz like the five below did. Um, and there's just a lot of other things like that in the works where it seems like it's a good mixture of larger corporations and industry coming in to the same point of small businesses coming in. So as long as we continue down that path and, you know, we, the right, a lot of good leadership in place here, that's going to, you know, keep, hopefully keep everything contained as far as the right kind of growth and controlled growth and not just, you know, letting everybody just try to put up stuff on every corner and, and add this and add that. And it looks like yeah. that's all heading in a really good direction it does. here. Um, and I was going to ask one question I have is being from Thomaston and you said you wanted to plant here. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you have, cause to me, it seems like trying to plant a business here can be a little bit more difficult than other places I've had experience with. And, and even ha- knowing my dad, who's a civil engineer and does, you know, some of that as well. It, it seems like for Scythe can be a little difficult 
to to bring a business here for multiple reasons. Did did you have any struggles getting here as far as from anything from finding a building to you know getting your business license to is, was there any of that that seemed to be a struggle? Um, no, I was very fortunate again that things just kind of lined up for me with my with my building coming about um, as well as with the getting my permits from the city, getting my licenses and all that. There was, I was going through kind of an interesting time because they were in the middle of moving places and, you know, were moving out of one facility and going into another and all that. So that part was kind of interesting because I went on just to chase my own tail kind of for a little while trying to figure out where everything was. Um, but once getting past all of that, um, you know, it was, it was a pretty smooth transition um, once I got yeah. past that part. And though. I feel like we hear that more now because five years ago or four years ago, when we, when we try to plant, we, we had some issues, and I think we were kind of the, one of the, the eye openers um, to some of those issues mm-hmm. um, because we there was definitely some changes made right after that. But I'm there not a lot of positive since then, though. Oh yeah, of, for sure. Of things getting better, and I don't know, it could have been with the transition from mm-hmm. where they are and all that. But I definitely think that like it, our situation was a, a rough situation to like get in and even like try to get established and licensing and all that. But I mean, obviously, like your situation, like I think it's definitely like made changes for the better Mm -hmm. and so which is good but oh yeah yeah for sure i I, and i think that's good to hear that because even my wife uh when she opened up her dance studio in town um she had a a much easier time than we did so and that was you know a couple years after us and even like here and you're about her same time frame so i'm thinking a lot of that's probably been uh, adjusted and and, you Mm -hmm. know better and better making it easier for people to get out there and even uh logan's story getting help you know, him to plant his business there. And he seemed to have a pretty smooth uh, time going in there. So it's cool to see like a lot of these big changes happening to the downtown, um, especially downtown. And, and mm-hmm. I think even like five below coming out and, you know, outside of in actual County and stuff. So yeah, I think there's some huge things happening. And I think as the podcast goes on, that's something that we'll dig into deeper. It, it'd be cool if we are able to continue this on don't get lazy. <laughs> it'd be cool to see this conversation now versus you know, I don't know how long we'll be doing this, but mm. even say a year from now, mm-hmm. you know, what that'll look like. Well, you look you at know? where we were a year ago than a year ago. So yeah. two years ago, you know, when I when I started my business, there were multiple locations downtown that were vacant. And then you look at it now oh, yeah. where it's You're just struggling that all, to find all, there is nowhere to find. I mean, there's just all these places are filling up and there's new places going up and just a lot of good, good growth and all that we were hoping for. But it's, it's here and uh, I think it's going to continue. You know, with, we're ready for that Zaxby's. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's yeah. only been like they've only talked about that since five years since we've been mm-hmm. here. I've heard uh, Zaxby's is coming. It's coming. It's yeah. coming. And uh, supposedly it's coming again, I guess. It stopped there for a little while. But it's <laughs> we'll, yeah. so we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Fingers uh, crossed. Yeah, let's get it. Fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so the, the last little part we'll get into is so this will kind of go. For you and let the viewers know, we decided to name the podcast. We'll go with En Route. I don't want to be the only one, I'm, you know, with my country accent. I don't <laughs> want to be made fun of, okay? En Route. En Route. En Route. En Route. So we named the podcast En Route um, for the, the aspect of me and Gator have always been the type of pr- people that when we, we've ran this business, even on the personal level, we've always tried to better ourselves every year, every day. It's just a constant growth. And, um, and I think that's what a lot of is needed to, to make this go on and to grow the downtown and to make central Georgia, you know, a bigger, better place. I think it's, it's all about just everyone making a personal growth and then even businesses growing as well. So the whole idea of the in route is that we're always to a better, trying to make it always to a better destination or a bigger, and you're never like, you're always growing. You're always constantly moving forward. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that that was the whole idea of it is to that be the whole idea of even as we do the video review stuff is always to grow and further things. So for you, what are three ideas or values uh, that you think are, are the most important for personal growth or even business growth? For people who don't have a business, you know, what are some values that everybody can take and, and truly say that, hey, this is why, you know, th- such as you went through the whole heart attack stuff and then had this business. I feel like your story is, is one of the stories that people want to hear about. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what are the things you've learned that are the most important? Well, you know, there's, you could go down a lot of different rabbit holes when it comes to stuff like that, especially with there's so many different avenues that you can go into to find, you know, what makes you, you know, driven, what makes you, what things do you want to change about yourself and all. So I, there's kind of three things I look at. One of them is just being honest. Well, and it's not just about being honest with everyone. It's being honest with yourself, you know, and a lot of times when I'm I'm 
think I'm busy doing things. I'm not really busy doing things. I had to be honest with myself and say, you know, you're, you're just doing some busy work stuff. What do you, what do you really need to be doing to move yourself forward? Um, that's the first one. The second one is, uh, being humble. Um, you know, we're all given different opportunities and we're all put, uh, in places where, uh, you can seize the moment and really be too excited when you need to kind of take a step back and be thankful for what you have. Uh, and you know, we're, we're all three sitting here right now. We, uh, have companies, we have businesses and we're, you know, in great positions. Yes. That, you know, we've worked hard to get here, but at the same time, you still have to, you know, be humble. Uh, for and being in the situations that you know that you're in every day, no matter what your situation is, um, you know you may be in a completely different position than the three of us as being business owners are. Uh, but you just got to be humble for what you are. And last but not least, of course, is hungry. You got to have an inner drive, and you got to have that want to be better personally, want to make everybody around you better, you know, and that want to. At the end of every day, have you done what you're supposed to do to make yourself and people around you better? Um, a saying that I try to remember, and I say it to my sales team and, uh, and, and different organization stuff that I'm involved with is that every day I just try to be the kind of person that my dog thinks I am. What if you have a cat? Well, be the kind of person that your cat thinks you are or your pet for that regard. My for, cat doesn't like me non, that much. The non-dog so. lovers, non-cat lovers, <laughs> whatever kind of pet that you have. I have a turtle. Pet looks at you. <laughs> no, I think that's a, that's a good way of looking yeah. at it because, you know, or even you could take that your child. Your child, yeah. Yeah. I think anything like, and, and honestly, me having a kid over the past year has changed my, my like outlook on that tremendously based on that. I, I look at it from that perspective, like what would my son want me, like what would he look at in me and want out of me? Right. And I try to live that up. Um, Be an know. influence. Yeah, for sure. Whatever it is, just as long as you have something at the end of every day, you know, that you want to be able to look at that, whether it be faith, whether it be your wife, whether it be your child, your dog. I mean, whatever it is, at the end of every day, if you can look at that and say, you know what, I made made today just a little bit better just for you. And so, yeah, I, I like the idea of the, the hungry part because, you know, it's like to me, and, and this is something that we're both very guilty of. And again, somewhat reason why this podcast is being created is it's so easy to get to be selfish. It's so easy to, to point the finger at somebody else and be like, oh, we're here because that person did this. Or we're we're not growing because the community's small. Or yeah, there's, it's so easy to be that selfish intent. So for me, that hungry part almost is like, you know, you got to want it for yourself. You got to, and even back to the honest, you have to look at yourself and be like, okay, why are we not growing? Mm-hmm. Be honest about that. Hey, we're not doing enough in, locally. We're not doing enough. Just because we're buying that ad doesn't make us involved. Like, how do we actually put the action in? You know, you can't you can't just have you know the money part. You have to actually have the 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 action. Mm-hmm. So for us, you know, I think having the action and then just truly just again just even like my, well, my wording is always be the change because everybody talks about they won't like. And you have your people that are stuck in their ways, obviously, but mm-hmm. the people that like, especially like our generation, like they won't change and they, they're tired of like the small town being stuck in that small town mindset. Be the one to change it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, there's no, there's, there's, there's no argument to it. Like you, get off your butt and let's go. Like, mm-hmm. let's change it. Well, even if it's little things, when you get out of your car and you see a piece of trash on ground, just pick it up. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if it's. You see somebody that needs some assistance, help them. Or, or if it's something as little as, you know, dropping that quarter in the jar when you're at a convenience store, anything like that. Just got to start somewhere with little little things like that. And, and, and if, yeah, if you if you look, there's so many opportunities. Yeah. There's so, especially like even like sitting down and us like brainstorming this podcast and everything and the video stuff. There are so many opportunities mm-hmm. to, to be involved more than just, again, that typical thing you have to do when you start a business. There really are so many different um, different ways of doing it. And, you know, maybe not everybody, like, we're not the best at video and, and podcasting because we're new at it, but we're trying something. You know, we're trying. And everybody keeps asking, you know, why are y'all doing it? You know, why are y'all doing it? Don't y'all have enough to do? It's like, yeah, we're plenty busy <laughs> <Yes>. with business. <laughs> and, and that's why we're doing it on days and stuff where we, we, we try to have time to do it outside of work. And, and you know, so it's one of those things. But I guess to finish up, um, the, the last little part, We've already told you who you are, but just a little plug. You know, what do you have going on? You know, what do you want everybody to know about you? Um, got the camera right there. Uh, you know, what are what are some things that and how to know, get in touch with you if they yeah, yeah. if they need insurance yeah if well, they I, want to talk deeper about how to get that policy that's right yeah we're we're the little gray cottage <laughs> State Farm Agency right across from Ingles four seven eight nine nine two nine nine four five or TommyJohnson.com. 
That's as far as my insurance plug goes. You don't have like a song to it? Uh, well, you know, the dancers will come in just a second. Oh, okay, okay. The door's locked. They can't get in. Well, it's unfortunate the camera's about to cut off. So. <laughs> uh, what about on like social media as well, Hunter? Uh, your... You know, Tommy Johnson State Farm on Facebook. Uh, that's our really biggest way. You know, we like people to come in, like, give us a comment, kind of follow some of the different uh, community events that we're doing. You know, we've got the uh, father-daughter dance coming up this weekend I'll at Hubbard. You yes, you will. You're the DJ. I will be DJ. That's right. The DJ. Gator's then, the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the uh, mother-son dance coming up in uh, February 22nd that we're going to be helping with uh, at Hubbard Elementary. And then, of course, we start the three weekends in a row of a lot of things involving the Forsythia Festival, where it's the 5K, where we'll have Pack 51 Cub Scouts will be out there giving out water in front of uh, in front of our office uh, for all the participants. Um, and then the food truck thing right after that, which is going to be amazing. Um, and then we just move into the carnival night, which we're going to have the following Saturday, and then the Forsythia Festival's right there. So Got a good bit going on. We, we have a lot, and not to mention the, the chamber dinner that is uh, annual dinner, which is this Friday night. So between all of that, the next you know five to six weeks are going to be are pretty slammed for us. Um, and then I hadn't even thought past that yet. It's just these next few weeks are going to be super busy um, for all of us, especially uh, for Scythe. Yeah. Well, I just want to give you a, a from from both of us and Gator may have something to say. Just a good a thank you for, you know, for one to uh, just reaching out to us as well. Um, you know, I know we haven't known you too long, but just for the few years you've been here, um, you reached out to us as young business owners. And, and, and that's always something that we appreciate is when especially older business owners reach out to us and just appreciate that we're here mm. and that we're trying to make this thing survive, even though it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot harder than you think it is. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, I don't know, just a good thank you for being involved. You know, I, I've noticed ever since, you know, I've been here just like doing the 5K stuff and, and really just seeing the small things. And not a lot of people mm. see that, you know, you don't see that everywhere. But, you know, I've seen it as a business owner um, and, and that definitely inspires me. So I just want to thank you for that. Well, thank you, man. I yeah, appreciate man, I that. I think you pretty much summed it up. Uh, I mean, I guess biggest thing I could say is obviously thank you. But um, we we've always had a thing that we love people that have always – went out of their way to speak to us and always like not not that we like care necessarily what we're known but shows that you have a caring personality and you do go out of your way to shake people's hands and all and i think that's one of the things that ever since i first met you, you've always been that way and to me that means a lot um especially being outsiders in yeah, the we're town too weird I mean, kids. You, you get it too but <laughs> i mean you, we're see, a little it, weird. you see us yeah. over in a corner it's like i don't know he, if he's talk. the weird one so. <laughs> here comes tommy yeah <laughs> here he comes so but, well, uh, thanks, guys. You know, uh, yeah. we're, we're, uh, I'm glad you are doing this podcast, and I can't uh, wait to see uh, where it takes y'all from here. It's going to do well. And maybe uh, maybe we'll do another one in a year. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll pop it back. You said it wasn't annual, but hey, maybe we'll make yeah. it that way. You never know. Who knows? Sounds good. But anyways, guys, that's going to sum it up for this one. And right. uh, well, shouldn't be a podcast for next Thursday. should be our first video. Yeah, so right. I'm excited about that. Stuff. So we're going to try to switch it up a little bit, go to a video. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next Thursday. Outstanding. So, thanks, thanks, guys. guys. Thanks.